right? Third trimester. Third trimester test. First big one is the group B strep test. Group B streptococcus is a common bacteria that resides in a woman's vagina. And if one is tested as a carrier, and as the newborn is coming to the vaginal mm -hmm. canal, it can infect the newborn, causing problems like infection, Sepsis, um, meningitis, pneumonia, so pretty serious things for a, a newborn could means, potentially be fatal. Which means baby is not going home with you after two days. And the purpose of this is to see if a pregnant woman is a carrier for this particular bacteria. Right, which is not harmful for a, an adult woman, but for a newborn, if they were to catch it or get it through birth, it could be very dangerous. So we don't care unless you are pregnant. Right. And if you're pregnant, it is recommended this is screened for around 36 weeks mm -hmm. for normal pregnant patients. Right. I say that because there are indications for um, others, say someone went into labor prematurely prior to 36 mm -hmm. weeks, right. broke her water, or whatnot. But for the most part, 36 weeks, we take a swab inside the vagina and then around the anus and it takes a few days for the test right. to come back. It's not a painful test, it's just, in, you know, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, for sure. But it is recommended. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, we have these, we hear these stories where a little outside of guideline, mm -hmm. like one I heard was, be tested at 38 weeks because you're more likely to be negative. Again, right. the goal is not to have false negatives. Right. The purpose of this test is to get information, to know whether you're a carrier or not, and then you can make decisions about what you want to do about with that information. And if one tests positive, then when you go into labor or when your water breaks, you'll be given IV antibiotics, ideally two doses given four hours apart, and the last dose should be within four hours of delivery. And getting those antibiotics protect the baby and reduce the risk of anything negative happening to the baby quite significantly. Some people don't want to get the antibiotics because they don't want to have a needle insertion and in IV. Um, some people don't want to get antibiotics because of the fear of antibiotic resistance, um, disrupting the natural gut biome, affecting the baby's gut biome. So there's there are some reasons that people feel strongly about not getting antibiotics. Um, but I think it's important with this, as in any other case, to weigh the risks and the benefits of what could potentially happen to baby if they did not get the antibiotics and they were to get sick versus, you know, what what is the outcome if you do have to get an IV or you are your your gut is off balance for a little bit. So, you know, looking at that that risks and benefits. And have you heard of any strange <laughs> treatment regimens? I have. I think you're more likely to have heard than yeah. I. So. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. People say take probiotics and that will reduce your risk. I've heard other people that say to use garlic and actually put garlic in your vagina and that can help reduce the risk. Um, I've heard of using a, is it Hibiclens or Hibiclens bath to try to wash away some of the bacteria. So there's lots of things out there of, of you know, people try to, to reduce the risk, but really the, the most evidence-based and the safest thing if you test positive is to get the IV antibiotics. If you choose to get the antibiotics, you'll get an IV. You get it every four hours. It takes about a half hour to administer that medication. It doesn't mean that you're now tied to the bed. It doesn't mean you can't use movement. It doesn't mean you have to be connected to an IV pole the entire time you're laboring. It's just that quick 20 minutes to a half hour that you need to get the medication. And then you can labor as if you were, you know, didn't have group B. Um, you know, one of the concerns I get is just the discomfort of the medication as it's going in. Usually the first dose doesn't feel too bad. Subsequent doses can sting. So I always tell clients, get an ice pack, put it over where the IV line is running. Um, you can talk to your nurse about, you know, diluting it with saline and pushing in slowly. So there's ways to make it more comfortable. But overall, it shouldn't impact your labor significantly or the way that you labor, movement, kind of all that, that good stuff.